told me before that the island was terrible and was very narrow, very twisty and, you know, I, I think it's not uh, so bad at all. It's only a few places were very narrow, but I think Corsica is more narrow than here and it's very, very fast road here. Although some of the straights on the 15-mile first special stage at Hamilton's Folly are certainly fast, they're very bumpy too and the powerful Quattro Sport looks quite a handful. But as usual, Michelle's courage is not in doubt. <laughs> Nothing else. I'm, I'm not very interested in what is going on behind me. I just like to see that the new things are working, nothing else. Does that mean you're not going to go flat out? Yes, of course. To, to make a proper test, it means I even go more flat out than normally. I take no care for the car. Always, always straight. He wasn't joking either. After a lightning once-over reconnaissance of the special stages that involved checking his pace notes only on the test which will be held in darkness, the new 500 horsepower short wheelbase Quattro's visibly much faster than any rally car ever seen before in the UK. The aggressive new Quattro sports a daunting sight. At this stunning pace, water rolls out distancing his nearest pursuers at a rate of no less than 2.3 seconds a mile. While Bertie's now lost any hope of improving on his fourth place, at least by his own efforts, so Walter Roll continues on his remorseless way with the new Audi Quattro Sport. Northern Ireland's being treated to a remarkable demonstration of power and professionalism. Oh, with a front suspension rather too soft for the job, the Quattro's a major handful over Ulster's bumps and crests. With persistent drizzle now making the roads very slippery, Roll's extending his lead even further, thanks to the Audi's amazing traction. On special stage 25, he's fastest yet again, which makes no less than 18 fastest times to date. Only two more tests remain. A regular racer on the British rallying scene. Seven times uh, since 1977 has he been in the top three. And Hanno Mekela has won the event four times. Here he comes, 85 miles an hour, we see on the speed trap as he comes down into the left hand. Hanu Mikola was leading the rally at Troskoy, but that lead is shrinking from 51 to 43 to 21 seconds at Havren. Disaster strikes here at Dovey. Certainly the engine is sick. 
his first retirement in the Lombard RAC since 1979. Twice world champion Walter Rawl in the Audi Sport Quattro S1 with its 500 horsepower available. And this is the special development car which has a most interesting semi-automatic gearbox. Well, the twice world champion Walter Rohr is just exactly the man to take advantage of it. He has two clutches fitted to this car. There he is through the left-hander. He only operates the clutch to get it off the line the first time and then is able to select the gear he wants automatically. And he's, oh, he's lost it on the exit there. The back end swings right round. And my goodness me, one or two of the spectators had a surprise. Walter Royal losing time there on this early special stage in Woolerton Park. Down the straight. Let's see just what sort of speed. 98. The Audi of Walter Rawl. This is experiencing suspension problems at Trenton and drops from 6th to 9th overall. Now, contrast the new automatic gearbox works Audi Quattro of Walter Rawl and just watch it go. particularly Welshman and birthday boy, David Flewellyn, who, with his English co-driver, Phil Short, is immediately on the pace in his Audi Quattro. Michelle Mouton's down-on-powered engine is compounding the Quattro's tarmac disadvantage. She's down in seventh place. After selling fastest time over Eskar Duffy's, David Flewellyn is fourth and making a big impression. There's a little bit more opposition than there's been on the last two, last two rounds. Um, obviously, Mikel in the in the Peugeot and Michelle in the Audi Sport, but uh, the Scottish is a long rally. It's the last loose surface event of the championship. Where does this leave you now? Well, what's going to be the situation? Well, I think to be in with a chance of winning the championship, I think it's <coughs> really is essential that you must you must win here, really. So, it puts us under more pressure, really. You're going to win? We're going to try. But not if French girl Michelle Mouton can do anything about it. And to help her, she's got the latest 420 horsepower Audi Quattro Sport. Malcolm Wilson has been competing here on the Scottish for a decade. But five years ago, his career almost ended on this rally with a horrific accident which put him out of action for months. Now he's back with a vengeance on top form and with newfound confidence after two fine wins this year. Following his good showing in Wales, David Flewellen has proved that he can master an Audi Quattro. Now he's looking for his first international win. Rest and be thankful hill climb. And in appalling weather, Michel Mouton leads the Lloyds Bowmaker Scottish Rally. While an enthusiastic Malcolm Wilson moves into third place, running with reduced turbo boost after a multitude of pre-event engine problems. David Flewellen is fourth, just behind Wilson, but sadly he's shortly to retire with an electronics failure. Sunday morning, special stage 16 in the hills overlooking Keswick Bridge, Inverness. And it's cat and mouse at the head of the field, as just 19 seconds separate two dueling Audi Quattros. Michel Mouton, having experienced problems with fuel pressure fluctuation and the hydraulic system's pump replaced, is using all the revs at her disposal and the rev limiter, doing everything in her power to stretch her lead. But the French girl is being remorselessly shadowed by a canny Malcolm Wilson, who is producing a superbly controlled performance to maintain intense pressure on the leader. Driving with commendable smoothness and style, and still with reduced turbo boost pressure, he knows he's still got something in hand. Drummond Hill, special stage 22, and the rally's no more critique, as Michel Mouton, driving as hard as ever, is overhauled by an inspired effort from Malcolm Wilson, who records a blindingly fast 15 minutes, 17 second time over the 15 mile stage. No less than 39 seconds quicker than the French girl. The Scottish rally has a new leader.
relegated to second place and now trailing Wilson by 32 seconds, Michelle's answer comes here in Ladywell, where she claws back four seconds from the Englishman. Monday morning at Carrick Forest in Glen Trool. And Malcolm Wilson's problem today is to judge the pace accurately enough to retain his lead while taking as few risks as possible. But the French girl has other ideas. Showing steely determination, she's chipping away at Malcolm's half-minute advantage, pulling back three seconds here at Knocked On. It looks very much as though this is going to be a classic fight to the finish. At the front, Malcolm Wilson grudgingly concedes the odd second to a charging Michel Mouton, who has closed the gap to 25 seconds, when here on special stage 31 in Kirochtree Forest, a gearbox failure brings the Quattro Sport to a sad and permanent halt. Rund 50.000 Zuschauer kamen am zweiten Tag zu dieser Motorsportveranstaltung, die mit 96 Teilnehmern, darunter 52 Teams aus dem Ausland, der bestbesetzte Staatsmeisterschaftslauf des Jahres wurde. Dennoch konnten sich die Österreicher klar durchsetzen, denn der deutsche Doppelweltmeister Walter Röhrl ist überall auf der Welt überlegene Spitzenklasse. Über die PS-Anzahl seines Audi Quattro S1 gibt aber auch er keine klare Auskunft. Ein weiterer Sieg hier bei der Semperit Rally war aber durch einen Mann gefährdet, der sonst als Langstreckenspezialist bekannt ist. Rudolf Stohl mit dem Audi 80 Quattro. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you.